we're here with Gene Stallings today. Why did you pick coaching? What, if, what would you have been if you hadn't been a coach? Well, if I'd had my brothers, I'd rather been a military officer. Uh, I went to a Texas A&M, which was a military school. It was, everybody was in the cadet corps, and I was in the Army ROTC. Went to summer camp and so forth, but I'm deaf. 100% uh, deaf in this ear, 97% deaf in this ear. And so I was taking the test for my commission, and they had the little thing said, now when you hear the, the noise, you push it. And I kept pushing it. They said, now you hear it? And I said, yeah, and I pushed it. They said, we hadn't even turned it on yet. They said, you can't hear it. And I said, no, I can't. And they said, well, you would be no good to us. Uh, company commander, battalion commander, whatever has to be able to communicate on telephones in those days. And it says a bomb goes off and you can't hear. Uh, so anyway, that was a major disappointment for me not being able to go in the military. I chose coaching because I loved my high school coach, Raymond Berry, who was really an influence in this part of the country. And when I went to Texas A&M, working for Coach Bryant, I just liked the way he did things. I liked his style, the way he uh, motivated the players and was an influence in their lives. So uh, I just worked for two people. I worked for Coach Landry in pro ball, and then I worked for Coach Bryant in college ball. And those are the two of the best. But that's the reason I went into coaching, because of Coach Berry and Coach Bryant. You worked for two of the legendary coaches of, of football. Uh, there's not many people who worked for both of them. In fact, I don't know if anyone else did work for both of those men. What made them a cut above? Because they placed a stamp on their respective, you know, Alabama. And I mean, it's hard to place a stamp on Alabama. And, you, and, they, and it's hard to place one on the Cowboys. Well, their they common denominator, they both knew how to win. They did it differently. Uh, our X's nose at Alabama were no better than anybody else's X's nose, but the players thought they were. The fact that Coach Bryant was on our sideline, it was worth 10 or 12 points as far as the players were concerned, because if Coach Bryant said it, I mean, brother, that was the gospel. <clears throat> when I was working for Coach Landry, our X's nose were better than the opposing team. We called the right play at the right time, the right defense at the right time, and we we were school better. He, uh, I don't know of nobody that had the knowledge of football the way Coach Landry did. <clears throat> Coach Bryant could make a guy play. Uh, Coach Landry could make him play, but they performed in his system extremely well. I talked to Bob Lilly recently, and Bob was uh, kind enough to sit with us. He said that I asked him about the stamp that, that Landry had on all of the guys who played with him uh, or under him and, and coached under him. He said that Landry, if you were with him for about three years, he left a, a permanent mark on you spiritually. Uh, he said most of what Landry did even transferred over to business because it was just a cut above. Yeah. T tell me about that. Well, he was the national president of the FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, we had chapel services in professional football because you you play on Sunday, and so you have a chapel service. And I, I never, never saw him miss one. Uh, he was very devout, and uh, if he said "dad gum," he thought he was cussing. I mean, he was straight as an arrow. Uh, he was just a good man, a knowledgeable man, uh, a no-nonsense type of guy. In fact, he just didn't go out and play golf with his coaches as you had Byron Nelson. I mean, he was that kind of person. Uh, he was very down to earth, but very knowledgeable, and he spoke with authority.